It was recently announced that the historic Marlboro Psychiatric Hospital in New Jersey, which had closed in 1998 after nearly 57 years of use, is going to be demolished. After the demolition and environmental cleanup work, which will take about 15 months, the Department of Treasury Division of Property Management and Construction is going to create a new, more modern use of the campus grounds, building two group homes that will accommodate persons with developmental disabilities. The type of long-term care that this facility used to offer has since become antiquated, and group homes are the new method for this type of treatment. Marlboro Hospital was a state-run mental hospital constructed in 1929 and first opened in early 1931 with the capacity to accommodate roughly 500 to 800 patients. Marlboro Psychiatric Hospital has a fairly dark past of abuse, neglect, and overall negligence. I am going to now cite an article that was published in the New York Times on March 8th of 1987 by Joseph F. Sullivan. A state senator who assumed a false identity that was drawn from a convicted rapist and armed robber was hired nonetheless to work with mentally ill patients at a state hospital. He says he got a lot more than he bargained for. The senator, Richard Cody, a Democrat of the 27th District, which is part of Essex County, and a chairman for the Institutions and Welfare Committee, said that what he wanted to do was expose New Jersey's failure to screen applicants for this job at state institutions, here and all across the state. The overwhelming impression from his six days working as an attendant at Marlboro Psychiatric Hospital, Mr. Cody said, was totally depressing and dehumanizing of the environment that he saw and exists at these type of state hospitals. He said, it suddenly dawned on me during my first night at work that I felt as if I was in prison. In fact, these patients were probably treated with less care than the average prisoner. They are not dressed as well, nor do they participate in as many activities as the average prisoner. The great irony, of course, is that most of these people have done nothing wrong. Senator Cody said that he had worked in a cottage with the chronically ill patients who had been there for years and would probably never leave. The patient's daily routine comprised of going from their beds to a day room equipped with rotten furniture and a television set where they would spend the next 16 hours interrupted only by meals. He said, we owe the patients a decent suit of clothes, decent living quarters, and a competent, caring, and humane staff to provide the care that they so critically need. I don't think that's too much to ask, he told reporters. 18 months before this article was published, Mr. Cody criticized the hiring practices of the state's Department of Human Services after an examination of its records disclosed that hundreds of employees of the state's seven psychiatric hospitals had criminal records. State Senator Richard Cody pursued his undercover operation after he learned that more than 300 of the state's 4,000 psychiatric hospital workers had criminal records, some for murder. The department said that would never happen again and that they would institute background checks and fingerprint all applicants. As part of the senator's undercover operation, he obtained the name and date of birth of a convicted rapist and the social security number of an armed robber, both deceased, from a state's prison system. Then he went to Times Square where he paid $10 for a fake ID and then applied for a job at Marlboro Hospital. Mr. Cody was fingerprinted, but was told that the prints were never checked. Neither were the references he gave. He was hired almost immediately, waiting only for the results of a physical exam. He went to work on the night shift on February 19th. At his orientation, he said, he was told that an attendant hired only a few weeks before had been dismissed for sexually abusing a patient, and he saw that other attendants use a blackboard pointer to prod patients and herd them into a room. During his six-day undercover operation, he discovered that some employees not only condoned beatings of patients, but were eager to share with him their techniques on how to administer these beatings without getting caught. One person said, if you hit them and someone sees you, you get fired. So what you have to do is put them in a closet and give them a beating there. 
Cody saw negligence on all fronts. In one incident, he described watching a patient stuffing discarded cigarette butts and ash into his mouth under the close, watchful eye of hospital attendants. He said, I saw him get up at 3 in the morning and dive into a trash can to get cigarette ashes. He ate all of those. When I asked someone about him, they said, don't worry about him, he's just looking for ashes. Then he went throughout the whole building, wherever there were ashtrays, and he'd eat the ashes. When he'd finish up, the attendants who had been smoking gave him their cigarette butts to eat. And with that, he went back to bed. No one intervened. Perhaps the most disturbing thing that Cody was witness to was the rampant sexual assaults that were routinely perpetrated against the female patients at Marlboro by the hospital staff. He said, my first day at work, I was told, you're lucky, you're the midnight shift. That's the easiest way to have sex with the patients. He overheard one of the co-workers bragging about assaulting female residents while they were asleep. Another aide told him outright that he couldn't wait until the evenings when he could get his hands on, quote, some of the young flesh. Another article that was published May 15th in 1995 by John Nordheimer titled, A Close Look at Guarding Insane Killers. When William Jennings, a paranoid schizophrenic, took an unescorted stroll on the grounds of Marlboro Psychiatric Hospital one bright afternoon, he broke no rules until he scaled a seven-foot fence and made a dash for freedom that did not stop until he reached Florida. He turned up a few days later near Disney World, apparently confused and disoriented, and was returned to Monmouth County. Bill Jennings, 39, is no ordinary mental patient. On Easter Sunday in 1980, he killed his parents with a deer rifle in their West Orange home, and his young sister hid in terror in a closet. At his murder trial the next year, a jury found him guilty by reason of insanity. The ease with which someone of his background could slip away unnoticed from an unlocked cottage at a psychiatric hospital whose 600 acres are encompassed by little more than an ordinary fence was shocking to many, none more so than his own brother. How in the world he could get walking around privileges with his history of making attempts to escape is beyond me, said James Jennings, 49, a West Orange fire captain, who has still not forgiven his brother for killing their parents. State officials said that Mr. Jennings had made at least two previous escape attempts while he was a patient at the High Security Forensic Psychiatric Hospital in Trenton, breaking both his ankles during one when he tumbled from a wall. It may sound cold-blooded, and I consider myself to be a reasonable man, but there are some deeds so heinous that even the mentally ill shouldn't be given privileges, James Jennings said. He is angry that he was not notified by the state before a judge recently eased restrictions on his brother, allowing him to walk about unescorted. Just one week before Mr. Jennings escaped from Marlboro, an Essex County Superior Court order described him as mentally ill and a danger to himself and others. Nonetheless, Judge Betty Lester, in the same order, approved privileges for Mr. Jennings recommended by the medical staff that allowed him to move more freely around the hospital grounds and even permitted supervised field trips if his conditions continued to improve. I have included links to these articles in the description if you would like to read the full story and full report. There's a lot more information on all of these cases. I'm just giving you a small preview, a small look at basically what had been going on at these types of hospitals. As many of these psychiatric hospitals meet their fate and are quickly being demolished within the next few years, I have made this video as a reminder of the dark past that has happened here so that people will never forget.